Hi there, Guy from Midwinter Minis here with another quick DIY hobby tip. A few of my upcoming videos will involve using weathering powder, so I thought I'd make this handy video to help you out if you're new to the world of weathering with pigments, and so I wouldn't have to explain the process in every video. If you're into scale modelling or wargaming, you might be interested in using weathering powders to give your models a dusty, worn and realistic look. They can create a really cool effect, but retail powders from major brands can be a little bit on the pricey side. Now, miniature wargaming is a pretty expensive hobby, so I like to be frugal whenever I can, and this includes making some of my own hobby materials. In this video I'll show you how to make your own weathering powders for a fraction of the price of the big brand stuff, and also give you an idea of how to set and protect them on your miniatures and models. I bought this set of 12 Earth Tone Artist Pastels from Royal & Langnickel, the same company that makes their cheap but decent paintbrushes I use on this channel. The whole set cost me just £4.50 on eBay, and contains 12 different warm earth tones, many of which should be great for creating realistic dust and dirt effects. Well, maybe apart from the pink one. When choosing the right colour, you might want to consider what board or bases or theme you'll be going for. For example, to match these two game boards, I'll be using this desaturated brown as it'll complement both. To create your own pigment powder, you'll need a little sandwich bag, a container big enough to put one pastel's worth of powder in, and something big, blunt and heavy to, how shall we say, release the pigment. Simply pop the pastel in the bag, make sure the little ziplock is fastened to stop the dust escaping, and get smashing. You can feel the powder through the bag to make sure that it's getting to the right consistency. You want as few lumps as possible, and to be able to feel the fine powder squishing around inside. If it's not broken up enough, just smash it a little bit more. And after you're done, it's time to put it in the container. I put a bit of blue tack underneath the little tub to stop it falling over and spilling powder everywhere. Now unzip your bag, and carefully pour out the contents into the tub. And do your best not to breathe in any of this dust, you might want to wear a mask or at least pull up your t-shirt over your nose while you do this. And there we go! By smashing the compressed pastel pigments, we've released them back into powder form. I could have smashed this particular colour up a little bit more, but there's plenty of fine powder in there to work with. Now we've covered how to make your own for a fraction of the price, let's quickly go over a few ways of setting your new weathering powder. I painted up four corroded looking metal sheets. Uh, these are just some plastic food packaging I snipped up. I think it was a box of mushrooms? Anyway, I primed them grey, applied some grime, airbrushed a few metallic colours, gave them a splash of my DIY dip wash, uh, check the video link that just popped up if you want to learn how to make that, and then I hit random spots with some rusty orange stippling. Once each panel looked roughly the same, I gave the lower half of each sheet a brush with this DIY weathering powder we just made. You can see that the effect is really nice, adding a very subtle, realistic age look to the simple paint job. However, if you want to use this on models you'll be gaming with, you'll want this delicate powder to not rub off over time. Here's what they look like before any treatment. I then remove the strips and apply the fixer noted at the top of each one. Number 1 will be the control with no fixer, number 2 will be army painter matte varnish, number 3 was just cheap hairspray, and number 4 was isopropyl alcohol applied through my airbrush. And here's what they all look like after the treatment. As you can see, the matte varnish and isopropyl has really knocked down the dusty appearance of the powder, and the varnish has obviously taken away some of the shine of the metals as well. Not ideal, unless you're going for that really subtle matte look. However, the cheap hairspray seems to have worked really well, keeping a bit of that powdery appearance. But how do they stand up to being touched? Ah, that's the golden question. Well, unsurprisingly, a lot of residue comes off the untreated control sheet, and also a fair amount of powder comes off the panel treated with isopropyl. Now, while absolutely nothing comes off the varnish sheet, surprisingly little also comes off the hairspray sheet too. If you're after just the look, with no worries about being handled, maybe for dioramas or display pieces, applying the powder after any varnish would be your best bet. But hitting your weather models with a bit of hairspray might be the solution if you're looking to play games with your models. Plus, they might end up smelling quite nice too. Now, these DIY pastel weathering powders are obviously a little lighter on the pigment than the intense staining you get with some retail products, but in many instances this lighter application is actually really appealing and useful, letting you get more subtle effects, and being harder to accidentally go overboard and maybe ruining your models. 
Also, you're effectively getting 12 different tones of powder for just £4.50, and that's less than 40p per powder, literally as cheap as chips. Anyway, that's it for this video. Please hit the like button if you found it useful, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye for now.